Hey, welcome to something new. In this series, I would like to introduce to you astronomical objects that I have already captured, that I find are attractive from an astrophotography point of view. And I would like on one side to introduce them to you from a historical and astronomical point of view, but on the other side also what it takes to optimally capture them. So more the astrophotography part. So as a start, I decided to go with one of the most famous objects, but also one that are closest to my heart. It's probably the one which I wanted to capture the most and which also most fascinates me. And it's also the first object that I actually printed on a picture and which hangs now on my wall. It's the Horsehead Nebula. So let's start with the history, which I find really fascinating. So it starts actually at the early 1800s in France. And a French astronomer by the name of Nicolas Louis de Laquelle is observing the night sky and mapping the stars. But wait, what's this? When he actually scans the sky, he comes across on a little patch which is dark. And it seems to obscure the stars behind it. What could that be? He doesn't really know. He odds it down and he continues with his life. And that's it. At almost the same time in England, also William Herschel comes across this strange black patch. And he writes something very vague down, which nobody really understands. And also this kind of gets lost in translation. So now we have to fast forward to the early 1900s. And there at Harvard University, a woman named Williamina Fleming is working kind of as a human computer and examining photographic plates. She notices the same patch of darkness that Lacquelle already saw around 100 years ago, but this time she realizes that this little patch is really a nebula. And not just a nebula, but a dark one, which is really cool. And so she's excited. So with this, she actually really is the discoverer of the Horsehead Nebula. But at the time, she didn't get any credit at all for it because her boss, who is a man, takes all the credit. Only much later, she actually got the credit she deserves. But the moment when the Horsehead Nebula really got to shine was still a few decades later when Edward Emerson Barnard examined his photographic plates and he was really able to capture stunning images of this nebula, the first of its kind. And he also did it finally put it down in his catalog. And that's why today we find it on the Barnard 33. That leaves us with another question. Why is it actually called the Horsehead Nebula? Because neither Lockell nor Fleming called it like that. And the earliest references we can find is in 1922, when a book called Astronomy for the Young Fox referred to it as the Dark Horse Nebula. At the same time, this Horsehead Nebula name also started to come up and astronomers called it like that amongst each other. And so soon this name started to dominate and under this name we know it today. Now next we come to the physical properties of this nebula. And I will hand now over for this part to my good friend Anthony. And you can actually leave it then in the comment below if you like him better for something like that, or if you would have preferred if I yodel it into the mic with my Swiss accent. So now, Anthony, please take over. The Horsehead Nebula is approximately 1,500 light years away from Earth and is estimated to be about three light years across. It is a cold and dense cloud of gas and dust primarily made up of molecular hydrogen, with some other gases such as helium and nitrogen present as well. The dark shape of the nebula is due to the absorption of light by the dust particles that make up the nebula. The cloud is relatively cold, with a temperature of around 10 Kelvin, minus 263 degrees Celsius. Nebulae are generally classified into four main types, emission, reflection, absorption, and dark nebulae. The Horsehead Nebula is classified as a dark nebula because it does not emit visible light. 
Instead, it appears dark against the bright background of the surrounding emission nebula, IC-434, which is being ionized by the nearby star Alnitak, which is a part of Orion's belt. The ionization of the gas in IC-434 is what creates the red glow that makes up the background of the Horsehead Nebula. Despite being a dark nebula, the Horsehead Nebula does emit some radiation at specific wavelengths. This radiation comes from small amounts of ionized gas and dust grains that are exposed to radiation from nearby stars. These emissions are typically at longer wavelengths, such as infrared radiation, which can be detected by specialized telescopes. The Horsehead Nebula is also an example of a Bach globule, which is a type of dark nebula that is collapsing under its own gravity to form a new star. However, it is unclear whether any stars are currently forming within the Horsehead Nebula. The main emission spectrum of the Horsehead Nebula is the red emission line of hydrogen gas, which is also known as the H-alpha line. This emission line is at a wavelength of 656.3 nanometers and is created by the ionization of hydrogen gas by high-energy radiation from nearby stars, particularly from the star Alnitak. The ionization process causes electrons in the hydrogen atoms to jump from a higher energy level to a lower energy level, releasing energy in the form of photons of light at the H-alpha wavelength. So, thanks Anthony, great job. I still don't really know if I should be scared or fascinated by this. Anyway, let's go on with the astrophotography part. Now, as beautiful as the Horsehead Nebula is, it is not that trivial to photograph. And there's a few things you should keep in mind. First of all, this picture has been taken with my FRA 400, so 400 millimeters. And I think it's still a little bit cropped in. So probably the sweet spot will be somewhere around 600 millimeters if you want the whole scenery. Now, if you only want exclusively the horse set, you could say you zoom much more in, like 1,300 millimeters, like 2,000 millimeters. It sounds amazing, right? You just get just a horse set. But there is one problem with that, at least from my experience. If you look at it, around this horse head, there are not many stars. And why is that an issue? Registration. I cannot tell you how many times with my CPC 800, I tried to capture this head and I could, by the life of it, neither with PixInsight nor with AstroPixel Processor, however what I did, I could not stack it. No way. And I'm sure if you have perfect shots, this might be possible. But just stating, registration is an issue. Now there's two other things which you have to take into account. One which you can influence, the other which you can't. What you can influence is the composition of the picture. And what you see is that you have a rather large black space below the horsey. And depending on how you compose the picture, this just doesn't look good. There is too much black. So it is crucial, like here, to rather put the horsey and this black triangle rather low so that the emission nebula which is on top of it really shines. And the other problem which is also here unmistakably is Alnitak. Alnitak just has the characteristic to mess the whole picture up because he's so bright and either you have huge reflection spikes or huge flares or even worse so if you look here, even here, the flare almost takes a third of the picture. I still like the picture, but it's annoying. And there is almost nothing you can do about it. So it really depends on your filter, telescope composition. And if you're lucky, it's less annoying. And if you're unlucky, it's just a mess. And when we talk about filter, usually, obviously, I would recommend here to go with a dual narrowband filter if you shoot one shot color and if you shoot mono obviously narrowband. And another thing also to consider is that you practically only have H alpha here. No oxygen 3, no sulfur and, and this tends to make the picture completely red which doesn't look that interesting. So what I did here in my picture I kind of worked with masks 
to ensure that I could give you the flame nebula a little bit of different color in orange so that it looks more interesting. Last but not least, the horse head nebula is a rather dim object, so a rather long integration time really helps here to make it shine. This picture is still, I would say, on the lower border. I should have even collected more light than I did. I hope that was interesting. If you feel this is interesting to you, please leave it in the comments below that I know this is something I should continue and please subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified when I issue the next ones of this series. See you next time and clear skies.